mercy toward us. Amen. Because it is his mercy that we are not consumed. And um, I can't I can't shake what I feel. But Apostle Gordon said no weapon formed. No weapon. Yeah. Amen. No weapon formed. Against me. Against me. Right. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. See Pastor Gordon um, one of the reasons why, for many of us, you hit a key point, and uh, 
For many of us, the weapon formed and it worked. Jesus. Uh-huh. That's the reason why you ain't got no joy. My Lord. The reason why you ain't got no peace. Amen. Because you've allowed the enemy to come and rob you. Yeah. What God said you should have. Amen. And oftentimes, folks would say, go back to the enemy's camp mm. and take back what he stole. But but prophet is going, and I don't want it if he took it. Right. <laughs> you gotta play with it. He can have it. <laughs> Because whatever he stole from me, whatever he took from me is now contaminated. Contaminated, that's right. Amen. So I'm going to lift my hands and say, Lord, give me something new. Yes, yes, yes. I ain't got much time to work tonight, but we're going to work tonight. Give me something new. Give me something new. I need, I need a fresh anointing. Yes, yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Because whatever the enemy has contaminated and if you take it back it'll contaminate you amen and i don't want to be tainted amen so i can't shake that thing i feel it in my spirit strongly jesus no weapon fall yeah. one of the other reasons why we don't rejoice enough is because you did not ever get to a place where you understood or saw what tried to take you out. Uh-huh. Amen. That's the truth. But when God opens up your eyes mm -hmm. to see. Yes. I'm like running around this church. Jesus. When God opens up your eyes to see what's standing in front of you. Jesus. That was getting ready to kill you. Yes, yes. There's a gratefulness. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen. I remember there was an individual in the Bible and he could not see what was standing in front of him. That's right. But the ass in which he was riding uh -huh. was able to see something standing there uh -huh. and he kept on uh -huh. going backward. But the rider kept kicking him wondering why he was going backward. All of a sudden, God opened his eyes. Yeah. To see. Yes. Angel of the Lord with a sword in his hand, uh -huh. getting ready to kill him. My Lord. Sometimes we are blinded mm. by the distractions around us yeah. and the fact that we're still. That we never see the thing that almost killed us. My God. Hallelujah. But what if God showed you every accident that he kept you from? My God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to talk. I'm going to get out of the way. Y'all, oh, my God. It's a Saturday night. Go ahead. And, and, and I oftentimes wonder, how could I praise God for all eternity? He said we were going to be up there singing and shouting and dancing and praising God. Some of y'all sat down already. All right. Hallelujah. And, 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 and I was wondering how in the world would I praise God for all eternity? And the saints of old had a revelation that we need. Come on. They said he's kept me from danger. See? And unseen. And uh, what happens when he unveils the thing that you never see? My God. Jesus. How many times he kept from rapists, hallelujah, that were pray, praying on you. How many times he kept you from stalkers that were following you? Yeah. Had it not been for the grace and the mercy of God, we would have been consumed. What, what, what's going to happen? Jesus, you only knew. When he pulls back. Yes. He shows you. And shows you My the diseases Lord. that were in your body. That's right. But he didn't allow it to get into your system. That's right. That's Hello. right. Oh, glory. Glory. Because it didn't 
so from the blood test that it didn't come into your body. That's but right. the Lord allowed it not to get into the bloodstream right. when it overtook your body. But he allowed your body to fight it all. It's not because you were protected. Right. Amen. Come on, preacher. That's the truth. Jesus. My God. Yes, sir. So you think because you were protected? Oh, Lord. That that's what kept you. Look over to your neighbor real quick and say, Had it not been for the Lord. Had it not been for the Lord. Who was on my side? Who was on my side? Glory! Hallelujah! Oh my God! Jesus! I'm so glad. So glad. That his mercy was greater than the weapon. My God! Thank you! Thank you, Jesus! There's a word from the Lord. That's it! Thank you, There's a word from the Lord. That's it! Had it not been. I'm telling you, we got the we got the thing about these things. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus hey! and all and all that he's done for Yes, me, yes, hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Thank God for saving me. Hey. Thank you, Lord. That takes on a different meaning when he reveals to yes, you. Yes, yes. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Sweet Jesus. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to a place in God, in my walk with God, where I forget. Amen. The children of Israel often find themselves in trouble because they kept forgetting. That amnesia was so bad that God brought them out of Egypt, showed them his mighty power. Mm. And one day Moses went into the mountain to hear from the Lord. And while Moses was communing with the Lord, the children of Israel came to Aaron and said, as for this Moses, we don't know what has happened to him. This Moses. So, because he's a long time in the mountain, we need you to do something for us. We need you to, we need for you to create for us, mm. create for us a, a God. That's something. And Aaron complied to their ignorance. My Lord. He said, give me the earrings. Yeah. Yeah, so he took all the golden earrings off of the men and off of the women and melted it down and Created a golden calf. And them folk got around there and they started dancing, eating, and they were shouting and singing to a golden image that they had just created. And it was such an insult to God. Jesus, my God. Because they said, this be the God. Yeah, that's what they said. That brought us out of Egypt. My Lord. Now, now if that ain't delusion, I don't know what delusion is. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You just created this thing. And you said, this be the God that brought us out of Egypt. It was already out of it. And they were dancing and singing and having a good time around this God that they created and Moses was in the mountain and God put on pause what he was saying God said Moses I think you might want to get down up off this mountain yeah, because I'm going to kill every last one of them Jesus, Jesus and when Moses began to hear the sound out of the camp he said, this ain't the sound of war. Listen to the sound. And he said, this ain't, this ain't the sound of them crying, being overtaken by anybody. And 
As he started coming down further, he realized it was a sound of celebration. Mm. And then when he got down off the mountain and seen what they were celebrating, false God. Moses and his righteous indignation beat the golden calf down. Mm. The Bible said he plundered it. In. He took the dust of it and put it in water and made all Israel get down and said, drink it up. Uh -huh. Jesus. Because it's an insult to God when we can be thankful to things Jesus. that he created. Then we don't have thanks for the creator. We got to make sure that we don't become Part of that group of people who Paul told Timothy about, he said, they became unthankful. My God. My God. Lord, don't ever let me become unthankful. My God. If I got to be the one that comes back to say thank you. Thank you. Let me be the one. Thank you, Lord. To say, Lord, I thank you. Thank Clap you. your hands one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I can't let it go. No weapon. Fall. No weapon. Against me shall prosper. When you're knocking on death's door. Jesus. The Lord snatches you. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And revives you. Thank you, Jesus. Then you can lift your hand and say, no weapon fall. Yes, that's right. Against me shall prosper. It says, I'm going to put it this way and we get into the scripture. If you've never had that experience, keep on living. Keep on living. That's right. Because this life has a way of bringing you some curveballs that you would least expect. Yes, Amen. So every time you get an opportunity to praise God, make sure you praise him because you might be praising him on layaway. Yes. Jesus. Amen. Because Amen. Because your praise today might save you from something tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Kings, the fourth chapter. Getting out of your way this evening. There's a word from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And, uh, the Lord has been dealing with me concerning this passage and these few passages for the past couple of days. And, and, uh, and a wonderful time last night. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Over time last night, thank Apostle Gordon and the Prophet Gordon for their hospitality. Come on, put your hands together for them. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for them. The wonderful hospitality and the wonderful spirit of that wonderful welcoming spirit that they have. And uh, but, but last night is old news. Amen. Uh huh. Old news. It was good, but. Just as quick as it came, was as quick as it went. Because mm. when I woke up this morning, I woke up to new mercies. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank and, you, Jesus. And after last night, I said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not going to ride off this wave. I need you to do something new. Do something new. And every day you wake up, you ought to, you ought to want to refresh it from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we're not living off of yesterday's word. We, we, we need something today. Yes. That's going to sustain us for the day. And so, even as I had an expectation last night of what God was going to do, I stand in a great expectation tonight. That he's going to do something greater. Amen. There's a few of you that walked in here tonight. And you said, Lord, I need you to do it for me tonight. Jesus. And I came to tell you he's going to do it for you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Second Kings, the fourth chapter. Verse number two through seven. And then we're going over to John 12. I'm going to pull verse number three out of there. Then we're going to the book of Acts, the eighth chapter. I want verses number 18. Verses number 19 from there. Second Kings, the fourth chapter. Second verse, we can have a shout, amen. amen. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise, and Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in the house? My 
Lord. And she said, Thy handmaiden have not anything in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me yet a, yet a vessel. Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Mm. And then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil. And pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. St. John chapter number 12. And I'm going to pull verse number 3. Uh, matter of fact, let's, let's start at verse number 1. All the word is God. You got it? Shout amen. 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 Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly. Somebody say very costly. Very costly. And anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the anointment. Acts, the eighth chapter. Last and final verse for the night. Acts, the eighth chapter. Eighteenth verse. In verse number 19. Y'all got it? Amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. He may receive the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. And don't lie about it, but look at your neighbor and say, I got oil. I got oil. In the house. In the house. Amen. Amen. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. There is more. There is more. But it's going to cost. But it's going to cost. Jesus. There is more. But it's going to cost. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We magnify you. We extol you. Father, we thank you, oh God, for this night. Because this is a night that we've never seen, nor shall we see again. Father, we thank you for your presence that has already been felt. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word that has already been read. Yes. Father, we ask you, oh God, that you do it for us again. Yes, Father. Please, we Jesus. Never Please, Jesus. Touch every individual, name by name, circumstance by circumstance. Have thine own way. Have free course in this place. Do what only you can do. Yes, we'll give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name that we do pray. If you love the Lord, shout amen. 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 To the glory of God. Amen. We are living in a generation that is very hasty. Yes. We're living in a generation in a time where 
We want everything to be done quickly. Mm -hmm. Many of us have God on a time restriction. If God doesn't do it for me by this time or that time, then I'm giving up. We're living in a generation that has not learned how to wait on the Lord. My Lord. We want everything quick. You know why I know we want everything quick? It's because we don't even cook dinner no more. Mm. Like we used to. We'll go to the frozen section of the grocery store. And we'll get those little TV dinners, and pop them in the microwave, and, <laughs> and we get five minutes. We eat our Salisbury steak with our mashed potatoes and corn that's right there on the, the side. Somebody said mystery. <laughs> and we're so hasty that we take it out of the microwave. And if anybody been there and done that, you know that you take it out of the microwave and, and you go and you get ready to eat the mashed potatoes and they're still frozen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is it? Still frozen. Because we've not learned how to wait. And some of us are so hasty that we won't even put it back in the microwave. We just eat around. <laughs> the frozen part. Eat that which is warm. Hasty in our spirits. Jesus. That we've forgot the virtue of waiting. Ain't that something? Can I submit something to you, brothers and sisters? There are things that can only be produced by waiting. Amen. Amen. That's right. Everything don't come as quickly as we expect for it to come. Right. Sometimes the weight is needed so that the best results can come of it. Amen. So grandma and them used to, hallelujah, praise the Lord, make turkeys and they used to make actual meals and, and they used to actually give us, you know, greens that were plucked and, and they would have to put it on the stove and, and it took some time for them greens. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got too many McDonald's lovers. I feel you. Uh -huh. <laughs> the greens had to cook. Yeah. Some of the beans had to cook and simmer. And, and we would sometimes get impatient and ask for my mama and the, is the food done? They'll tell us, no, go sit down. I'll let you know when it's ready. Uh -huh. Sometimes you'll go and play games and do stuff still waiting. And, and it seems like it took forever. Finally, they'll come and tell you it's ready. And when you sat down to eat, it was so flavorful. Yeah, yeah. My God. It was so good. Yes. To the point. I mean, you ate every last drop and then lick the plate. Like, oh, I'm talking. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you say, can I have some more? Because there, that there's something about waiting that produces something. This generation, we want it so quickly. We're in a hurry. Because if the truth be told, many of us think that we have something better 
better to do. Hallelujah. Because the enemy has tricked us into this spirit of being hasty to the point where we have forgotten how to wait. We're in a generation where now you don't got to go to the bank no more. Mm -hmm. There used to be a time that when we wanted to deposit money, we had to go to the bank, fill out a slip, stand in the line, then they deposited the money. If we wanted money out of the bank, we had to go to the bank. Sit out of slip. They ain't talking to me tonight. <laughs> Stand in the line. Amen. And get the money. But now we can pick up our phone and instantly deposit money into our bank accounts and send it here and send it there. Yeah. yeah. Everything is moving swiftly. The point where the patience of the saints mm. My Lord. is a yeah. yeah. So now, brothers and sisters, we come to God and, and we get saved and we come to the church and we want God to do something for us, but if He don't do it for us in two months, yeah. Hallelujah, we're out of the church. I don't get the chance to preach. Okay, I'm gonna walk the house tonight. I don't, I don't get the chance to preach or the chance or the opportunity to sing. I'm out of here. If I, if I can't play, I'm gone. My God, because we are hasty. We don't want to wait. But there was a time. In the church where, praise the name of our God, you couldn't just jump up here. That's right. 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 Anybody remember those days? Oh, yeah. Probably going to get in trouble tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, but there was a time, hallelujah, when you had to come in here and you had to prove yourself. Amen. 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 You had to be proven. You had to be faithful. You had to be diligent. You, you had to be an individual that had some stability. Hallelujah. But praise the Lord. Now we got a bunch of people that are impatient. Hallelujah. Unfaithful. But they want to be promoted. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You're telling the truth. Want to be promoted quickly. Without being proven. Paul told Timothy. He said there are individuals that want the office of a deacon, and he said if they want the office of a deacon, these first must be proved. Yeah. Come on now. After they're proven, then let them be in the office of a deacon. But because everything is so hasty now, we're ordaining people that don't have no ability to wait. That's why you got so many spiritual fathers. Mm. So many spiritual mothers. So many mentors. <laughs> That's why some of us got so many pastors. Come on. I know the Bible said I give you pastors after my own heart, but you got a pastor here and a pastor there. Pastor over here and a pastor over there. And and, and then, because of the age that we're living in, when it comes to social media, everybody that's floating around on TikTok and Instagram is your pastor. Right. Mm, mm, mm. Now, we got so many spiritual fathers and mothers and this and that to the point where we think that we've been, hallelujah, we've been promoted quickly in our knowledge of the word and the things of God because of the resources that we have to receive information, but we've never waited. But I heard the Bible say, he that has the gift of ministry, he ought to wait. Right. Okay, am I talking about it tonight? Yes, Let him wait are. on his ministry. Wait on it. Wait on it. Everybody jumping up so quickly. 
They jump it up so quickly. And they jump it up so quickly to the point where they are immature yes. in their gifting. Yes, my God. Because there's only a element that can be pulled out in the waiting season. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Sure mm, you got to wait. Got to. On the Lord. Pastor Blake, what does that have to do with anything that you're talking about tonight from the scriptures? I'm so glad you asked. Because on last night, I posed a question to you and I said, tell your neighbor I want real power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I said, how many of you want real power? And many of you jumped up, threw your hands up and said, I want real power. But now I got to come and build on the foundation to tell you that if you want real power, there's some things you will have to wait for. Amen. Amen. Because in your waiting, God's going to produce something out of you. My God. The anointing is not a quick thing. You got to go through something. Got to. To be anointed. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to get to where I've got to go. This is where I'm going. When you look at John, the 12th chapter, the third verse, the Bible says there was a woman who, hallelujah, had a box of ointment. And she anointed Jesus. And the Bible said something about the oil that she was carrying. The Bible specifically said it was costly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, as the Gordon, when the Bible says that it was costly, oftentimes we just take it at face value that it was costly. But we never inquire about how much it cost. Never actually look it up to see what it costs. We just simply know that it was costly and we know the name of it, that it was Spikner. But have you ever looked at how much Spikner costs? My Lord. Mm. So the Holy Ghost said, he said, I want you to show my people exactly what it costs because y'all still see in the alabaster box. <laughs> you don't know the cost. <laughs> you don't know the cost because you've never investigated to find out how much it costs. Amen. Amen. So when you actually investigate how much it costs, they, they that in the days of Jesus, spike not in particular, cost 300 denarii, which is equivalent to 54,000 U.S. dollars. Mm. Wow. Jesus. Uh -huh. My Lord. My Lord. Yeah. Come on. That's thank you. Now, I'm, I'm sorry. Mm. How many of you got $54,000? Jesus. Sit in your bank account right now. Mm -mm. Yeah, don't put your hand up because I'm about to ask you to borrow it. <laughs> 54000 dollars mm. Which is equivalent to three years worth of working. Mm. Which means she labored for three years to get what she got. But these jokers think they're going to come in here in two months. My God. Jesus. Hey. Some folks think they're going to sit on me tonight, but it's all right. Three years of labor. 
to produce that oil. This oil. Mm. So when Judas smelt the oil, yeah. he knew what kind of oil it was. Because if I could put a footnote here, and all oils don't smell alike. Yeah. Amen. There's, Amen. A, there's a fragrance that comes with each type of oil. So there was an odor that was recognizable and, and he knew what kind of oil that it was. And, and he said, why wasn't this sold? So that the money could be put in the money bag and given to the poor. And the Bible, and I, and I made mention of this last night, because the Bible said he didn't really care about the poor, but he was a thief. He just wanted to them, he wanted them to exchange the money, put it in the bag so he could steal it. My God. He didn't care about the poor. He just wanted the price of the oil. But that spirit of Judas is still running rampant in the church. Jesus. Because it wants to get something that it didn't pay for. Uh-huh. Didn't work for. Hallelujah. My Lord. It, it wants to be able, hallelujah, to reap the benefits of something that it did not leave. Jesus. It wants to be able, hallelujah, to live off of the labor of somebody else. Hallelujah. But, but you got to understand, hallelujah, that if you're going to have this type of oil, it's going to cost you something. Mm. And before you think that I'm talking about natural money, I had to read Acts the 8th chapter. To let you know it has nothing to do with actual money. Mm. Because Simon thought that he was going to purchase the power of God. And, 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 and Elder, we were in the office and your wife got to talking. And she got to talking and, and she was talking about the oil and the price and all. And she went to talking. I said, oh, I can't have this conversation. You stepping into tomorrow's message. <laughs> I ain't going to entertain this time. Because Simon thought that he could buy the power of God by pulling money out of his pocket. Just like us today. That's the reason why they're going online and getting their ministerial licenses. ordained a bishop and apostle Gordon. I ain't seen so many people being elevated by a piece of paper a day in my life. They think because they put a cross around their neck, put a ring on their finger, turn their collars backwards, that they don't automatically equate to the anointing. But can I tell you something? A piece of paper don't mean nothing. And if you went to Bible college, hallelujah, thank God for you. But can I submit something to you? You can have a PhD in this thing and still not Go sit down there for a couple of hours and type on the computer. Mm. Answer a few questions. And, and all of a sudden they get produced with a, a license that tells you you can preach. And they don't know no more of the Bible than the questions that they had to answer. You know, folk don't even come to Sunday school no more. Don't come to Bible study no more. But they be ready to get in the pulpit and preach. Uh -huh. mm. They be ready to get in the house of God and operate with limited knowledge. Can I park the car here real quick? That's the reason why we got so much false doctrine in the church. Amen, amen, amen. That's the truth. Yeah. yeah. You'll get your blessings tomorrow. Mm. Amen. That's why we got so much false teaching in the church. That's why preachers can stand up in this sacred space and teach us that Jesus was disobedient 85% of his life and he was outside of the will of God. That's why they can teach it. The church can quiet. Y'all might be scared, but I ain't never scared. Go ahead. 
Jesus. And the reason why some of you can't say amen because you said amen to that. Because you thought what he said was right. Uh huh. I, I wasn't there, but you shared it on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he got a point. Yeah. yeah that sounds right. Mm. Yeah, Jesus wasn't doing everything that he was supposed to do. Oh, my Lord, my Lord. So, you sharing it, eight minutes, still following false teachers? It's going to tell you that Jesus, 85% of his life was outside of the will of God. But I want the testimony of Jesus because Jesus said, I always do that. Yeah. 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 Jesus, I always do that. Which pleases my father. In fact, Jesus was 12 years old. Hallelujah. And his family went back home after visiting Jerusalem. They realized when they got back that Jesus was nowhere in the company. Mary had to go back, hallelujah, to Jerusalem. When they got there, they found Jesus in the temple at 12 years old. Found him and said, what are you doing? Jesus said, do you not know that I must be about my father's business? Look at you looking like you're looking. Yeah. So you tell me how in the world. Come on. Tell on that devil. Disobedient. Out of the will of the Father, 85% is 85. I would be scared to even say 1%. 85, meaning he lived almost his entire existence in disobedience to the will of God. But the devil is a liar. The reason why you can preach that chunk is because you have faith. Microwavable generation. You ain't been in the oven because when you're in the oven, you don't come out fully cooked. That's right. That's what you're saying. Amen. Amen. Tonight, hallelujah. But I ain't never scared. Hallelujah. You got to wait a while. You got to be with God for a little while yeah. so that He can reveal some stuff. To Amen. You. Amen. That's right. That's right. Wait on the Lord. I know you Undercooked. Undone. Wow. That's what happens when we're taking the benefits of something that we ain't paid for. Yeah. I know that church today, brothers and sisters, looks glamorous. How about Apostle Lord, can I? Can I just work the house real quick? Nowadays, it's glamorous. A microphone in your hand is glamorous. Standing on a stage is glamorous. But there was a time, our faith, to believe in Jesus Christ, it was a death sentence. That's right. Amen. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible said they were waiting for the, the coming of the Lord. And, and in their waiting for the coming of the Lord, they suffered persecution. And many of them, hallelujah, received their children, hallelujah, dead, hallelujah. And, and they were waiting for the resurrection. Some were given over to beasts and to lions and all type of stuff. Poured in hot water to be a follower of Jesus is popular today. Hallelujah, but it used to be a death sentence. That's the reason why the word witness, hallelujah, in the book of Acts, the second chapter, when he said, you shall be my witnesses. If you look in the Greek, that word witness means a martyr, which means that your life is on the line. Hallelujah, when I come to ask you, how many of you know the cause that it really calls to follow Jesus? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 Mm. I thought it was just showing up. Of course you something. I thought it was just singing. I thought it was just dancing. But Jesus said it. Jesus. He said, which one of you goes to build a tower or a house or a building Don't cry up or any more. type of infrastructure you go to build it and, and before you start working, which one of you don't first sit and cut up the cause Amen. that is going to cost you to build this edifice. Yes. You must first sit down, calculate, yes. cut up the 
cause. And you must understand whether or not you've got what it takes. My God. To build this it. Plan. Amen. He said, because if you're not careful, what you'll do is, if you don't sit down and count up the cause, you'll build the foundation, but then you're never able to build the house. And can I submit something to you? That's a lot of Christians. We start it. Jesus. We did the thing that initiated our walk with God. We started with God, but we got down, hallelujah, into a position where we realized this is more costly than I expected. Right. And we never continue to build because it costs too much. Yeah. Right, right. Because the anointing comes with a price. Yeah. I would say it was costly. Fifty-four thousand mm. U.S. dollars for some oil. Who in the world would pay such a great price for that kind of oil? The only person that would pay that kind of price for the oil, they must know what the oil is worth. Yeah. Right, right. That's right. And the reality is. I've gotten to a place where we understand the value of yes. what we have. Yes. My Jesus. Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost is just not a good feeling. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's Amen. It's just a figment of our imagination. That's right. Paul put it this way. He said, having this treasure in earthen vessels. Which means what we possess is valuable. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What we have as the people of God is valuable. And, 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 and some of us have not really understood the depth of the value of what we have. In fact, can I submit something to you? That you could not get the Holy Spirit of God until the price of Calvary was paid. You couldn't get the Pentecost until you got the Calvary. Right. And after Calvary was done, then we went to the upper room. Right. So can I submit something to you? That there's a price that got to be paid before the oil is produced. Before Pentecost, you got to go to Calvary, which yeah. means something got to die. Yeah. I feel like in the room. Something got to die. Yes, Lord. Oh God, God. Amen. Costly. It's a price. Mm. That's gonna be paid. Jesus. And I started thinking about other scriptures, and then I really started digging deeper into just how valuable this thing was. Because the question would be posed to us from the scripture: What profits a man yeah. to gain the whole world yeah. and then to lose his soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? It started making me think about how valuable the things that God has given us is and I started realizing, hallelujah, that this thing, hallelujah, is costly. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, yeah. I don't know about you, hallelujah, but I couldn't go to the thrift store and get what I got, hallelujah. I couldn't go to the Dollar Tree and get what I got. Can I submit something to you, Evangelist Nigel? It costs blood to get this. Yeah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And not only was it in the kind of blood, the Bible called it precious blood. Yes, How you look at you at what the saints of all started saying, oh, precious, it's time yes. to go. That means me. Why yes. is no, no other thing I, I know. know? Nothing but the blood God of Jesus. Jesus. Can I have about 20 of you jump to your feet real quick? Lift up your hands and throw your head back and say, thank God for the blood.
Because you think. My God. My God. Close the book. You think that you're going to be anointed mm. and fornicated. My God. Some of you scheduling your some of you scheduling your sneaking link right now. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Some of you can't wait until the benediction. Hallelujah. So you can be up all night long with the booty call. But I came to tell you tonight that if you truly want to be anointed by God, there's something in your life that got to die. Hallelujah. And tonight is a night of crucifixion. Because in order to get the oil of the Lord, there's something in your life that you got to bury. There's something in your life that you got to crucify. Oh, 
Woo! Jesus. That stubborn spouse line up. Oh my Lord. I want to be so over. Yeah. Poured with the anointing of yes, God. Yes. To them stubborn children to start acting right. Yes, yes. Prophet is going out to about acting so right that when I come home, the house is clean. Yeah. Hallelujah. The table is set. Oh, y'all gonna talk to me. I'm talking about they saying yes, ma'am, no ma'am, yes, sir, no sir. Yeah. I'm talking about that kind of anointing right. that destroys every yeah. that everything in my house that the enemy been trying to use. Jesus. And it stayed in here. My God. I mean, what good is it, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. If we keep coming to these types of gatherings and we get all of this anointing, I'm talking about the power of God be moving. But the minute that the spirit lifts, it leaves. But the Bible told me that she poured enough oil to the point that the oil stayed. Yeah. Aren't you tired of leaving service after service and when you get back home you go back to the struggle that you walked in here with? Aren't you tired of leaving services like this yeah. and go back to battling the demons you were battling before you came here? Don't you want the anointing to rest on you? Yeah. Of allowing you to know people not after the flesh, ah, but, but after the spirit. Yes, yes. In fact, it's a biblical commandment that tells us no, no man after the flesh. Yes. But after the spirit. Yes. That, 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 that tells you look past their, their outward, their, their exterior, look past that and, and discern with your spiritual eye yes. what kind of heart they possess. Yes. And so when we look at people, we can't look at what they have on and think, oh yeah, they're a good person. Right. You have to look at the spirit of a man. Right. You have to look at the spirit of a woman in order to know who they are. So I've known him only a short time in the flesh, but I've known him for a mighty long time in the spirit. Yeah. So I need something to you. Uh -huh. Pastor Gordon and Prophetess Gordon don't put on these services for the 
your performance. Hallelujah. But yeah. can I submit something to you? It will be a terrible thing if we keep coming to the overpour and the outpour experiences and we keep treating them like it's some type of performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Keep going. Yeah. We looking at it like it's some kind of show and we never get out of it. When God wants us to get out of it, wouldn't it be a terrible thing if we keep gathering together and there's no there's no anointing. There's no yokes destroyed. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing to keep coming day in and day out, spending your hard earned money and all your time on a Saturday night in a house where you're not going to be provoked to change? But I came tonight to tell you in this overpowering experience that God wants something in your life. He wants it to. The Lord said, Come out, come among them, and be ye separated. Yeah, and the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you to myself. Somebody be ready to get into some devil in tonight. I heard the Holy Ghost say, Come out. Come out. Oh, y'all still sit there. Look at your neighbor. Stand up real quick. I know what I just heard the Holy Ghost say. Jesus. I heard the Holy Ghost say that He can ready a lot of fire under you tonight. Oh, and the reason God. why He got the light of fire under you is because you got too many snakes around you.
the back. Jesus. But I saw you on that guitar tonight. Yeah. And I see you get up and praise God. Jesus. And we looked at you and said, let him praise him. Uh-huh. Beautiful thing to say. Jesus. But as I stood right here just now and looked back, the Holy Ghost said, that praise uh. just counterattacked something that was getting ready to come in your life. My and Lord. for the next 20 seconds, I want everybody in the room to help him praise him. Hey.
what the price is. Jesus. I said it last night, and it bears reminding. Uh huh. Your pastor had already told you. Uh. Some people that you got to leave alone. Yeah. Which means that's the price. My God, that's it. You got to pay the price. Uh huh. And let me tell you something. If losing that thing, that person, or them had to be compared to losing your relationship with God. Those two prices are night and day. Yeah. No comparison. Because I'd rather lose them. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Come on. Than lose them. That's right. Salvation. So there's somebody that you need to text tonight and tell them. I was giving an ultimatum. I was giving an ultimatum tonight. Yeah. And it was you or the Lord, and I choose him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Choose Jesus. Yeah, that's what you need to text them. Yeah. Some of you been texting all night anyway. My God. So text that. Hey, hey. Tell the truth. I choose him. Yes. That's it. Young lady, I can't, I can't let you go out of my spirit because I hear the Holy Ghost keep ringing in my ear that he's going to light that fire under you to expose every snake around you. Jesus. The Lord keeps bringing me two females in particular. My God. And you know who they are. The Holy Ghost said you know they ain't no good. Jesus. My God, my God. My God. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Come on, prophet. Come on, prophet. Jesus. Jesus. Friends be killers nowadays. And you keep trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. My Lord. Because you want to be that friend that keeps peace and keep everybody together, but this ain't the season for it. Jesus. Let them go. That's right. Let them go. Yeah. Because they do good things, do nice things around you, but yeah. you don't see what they stand behind your back. My Lord. That's what snakes do. Listen yeah. to the prophet. It can be right there under your feet and you never know it's in the room. Yeah. Listen to the prophet. My God. Snakes are so cunning. Hear the Lord. So cunning. They're so cunning because they're quiet. Snakes don't make a lot of noise. Uh huh. A snake is, it's not loud, but it's deadly. Yes, yes. And it will spy you out for a long time. Remember, I told y'all about that thing called waiting? Ah. See, the thing about a snake, a snake don't mind waiting. A snake ain't got nothing but time. Nothing but time. And a snake will sit there, watch you for a long period of time waiting for the opportunity to strike. Holy Ghost said he just caught you before the opportunity to strike came. Jesus. Two of them. Two. Two of them. Two females. Holy Ghost coming to me so strongly that I could almost I could almost draw them out. Jesus. Speak Lord. 
speak. Come on. Jesus. Real skinny. Real skinny. It's real petite. I promise you, I can, I, I can almost draw them out. Last if I had a pen and paper and I was able to draw them out and show you the picture, you'll run out this door right now. Jesus. I mean, that's how crystal clear they Jesus. come to two of them. And you know exactly who they are. Jesus. You, know about them. you even had your own inclinations about them, but you keep trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. Everybody ain't no friend. Everybody ain't no friend. And see, the thing about the snake is that the snake, you know, He's a smiling in your face. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to take him to backstab. But the thing about these snakes, the boss, they're not stabbing no more. They killed me. They told us they were stabbing. They were backstabbing. Now they kiss him. Jesus was betrayed with a kiss. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. And they, get, they, get you, they get you in a subtle way. Jesus. You try to tell them? She did. You try to tell them? Come on, prophet. That's why, that's why I'll be coming around and listening to this stuff. Now, I want y'all to think I'm bougie or nothing. You know, that's why I'm proud of being bougie. I ain't bougie. But I perfectly, even my ministers, my ministers know, they do something called morning manners, and they, they got split days, and they, they minister, they give the word of the Lord, and I don't listen. And I told them, so I don't listen to y'all. I mean, bougie. I mean, I'm probably talking about people. But because of what I walk in, I, can, I cannot jeopardize my hearing. Yes, yes. Come on. So that way when God goes to speak it, I know it really was him and not something I heard. Amen, amen, amen. My Lord, amen. Come on, prophet. My sister, you know I love amen. supporting people. Amen. But when people invite me to preach, to preach sometimes, it will be a week long, I don't go to the other service and I won't tune into the live. Right. Mm -hmm. Just so when I get there, Come on. if anything gets said, I have a whole ghost that the one said before me, it didn't come because I heard it. Right, right, right. It literally had to be God. Yeah. So I purposely tuned stuff out. He's God like that. So I wasn't here when probably so God looked at I was not here. I wasn't here. I don't know nothing about what she said this morning. We had no conversation. So she told y'all that this morning, you better take heed. Amen. I you tonight. Jesus. Take the escape. Take the escape. You said that too. He says, I'm cleaning up. They better go. They better start cleaning up. They better become a spiritual janitor. Jesus. Start cleaning up some stuff. God ain't playing in this season. God ain't playing, and the devil's not playing. Amen. He's not playing because he knows he only got a brother a short time. Yeah. So in his short space of time, he's trying to do everything that he can do to devour as many people as he can. You already know what to call. I'm going to let this thing go. I'm telling you, the anointing will cost you. We've been in consecration. As we were talking in consecration, we started talking about how the enemy is using people to use the people of God as merchandise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, amen. It's a spiritual slave trade. Yes. Amen, Jesus. My God. I was saying these false prophets are making merchandise of you. Making money, yes. Mm -hmm. So what are they trading? Remember when Jesus went into the wilderness and took the devil? He took him upon the pinnacle yeah. of the temple. He showed, took him upon the high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and said, All of this I will give unto you if you bow down and worship me. So God is God is saying that Satan is making a bargain for the souls of the people. So he's lowering the preachers in. And telling them, I'll give 
you fame. I'll give you money if you go get me them. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus. My God. So they get their mansion. They bring you to him. And he binds you and makes you a slave to sin. Uh, we read that in the midst of consecration yeah. when the Bible said they promised you liberty, but they themselves are the servants of sin. Ain't that something? My God. I'm telling you, you can be free, and they ain't free themselves. That's what's happening in the house of God here. Satan wants you to be a prisoner. And so because he wants you to be a prisoner, he's intensified his tactics. I cannot express this enough and explain this enough, and I promise you I'm going to let it go. But there's no strange thing. In the book of Revelations, they say that old serpent, uh-huh. who is the great dragon. Yes, he started off as a snake. Now he a dragon. Uh-huh. Now, if you ask me what the difference between a snake and a dragon is the very first thing I'm going to tell you is that they differ in size. Uh huh. So he's that old serpent who has now become that great dragon, which means he's intensified his tactics. Right, right. And he's just not that old serpent that whispered to old sister Eve. He's using bigger things. Yeah. So while you're looking at how Eve and Adam ate of the forbidden tree and they simply ate a fruit. I don't see what kind of fruit it was, so we ain't gonna say no apple. They said a fruit, so we don't know what kind it was. But while they were eating of that fruit, the enemy has presented things in our lives that we're eating from. So it was a fruit yesterday, mm. but it's adultery today. Uh huh. Come on, Jesus. You have to put your hands up, but some of y'all keep being unfaithful to your spouses. My Lord. The thing is, if you want to be anointed, you got to give that up. Give it up. It's gonna cost you all the way. That side chick ain't worth it. That's right. Right. They don't like this. Tell it, tell them. 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 Tell but it's the truth, it's the truth anyhow. Fire in his bosom and not be burned. Not be burned. You brothers, you keep on looking at her with them booty shorts on, walking around the house. Oh, and ain't married to her, and, and, and think you will be able to have self control. Circumcise those ears. Oh, to call me done. I'm done. No. Thank you, Jesus. This anointing gonna cost you. Yes. This will cost you the things that are keeping the anointing from flowing. Yes. So you gotta make a constant decision to get it up tonight. I ain't going to the laundry list of it. But I feel a mighty breakthrough. Yes. Where's Muscle Gordon? 
the office. Tell them I need them real quickly. Don't be too busy. I feel a mighty anointing. Holy Ghost came to hear last night and said healing was coming. Jesus. In the room. I believe multiple people were healed last night. Amen, amen. amen. God did it for us, but God can do a new thing. Thank you, Jesus. You can we do a new thing in us tonight? I feel this thing so strongly. My people know that when I walk in this thing like this, I don't really deal with a lot of specifics because, you know, the climate of the day. I'm, I'm a preacher against sin. But I don't get too caught up in the specifics. But also, what I need to help tonight is I'm feeling a strong burden of the Lord to break the spirit of perversion. Jesus. Speak, Lord. It might be taboo, but I feel the I mean, I feel a strong touch of the Holy Ghost to war against that spirit of pornography. Yes. yes. And it's in here. Mm-hmm. It's in here strong. My Lord. Men and women. Speak, Lord. Tear that kingdom down. Jesus. And, and sometimes I see things in the spirit and I see them trying to hide. Those are the things I try to get. And that's one of the things that's trying to you know, tuck itself away. Because the enemy's trying to make you think that it ain't that big. It's just, it's just porn. It's natural. But I'm getting ready to step into something real quick. I say so. I talk to them privately about this stuff, but I really haven't dealt with this on a public level like this. Like I'm about to do tonight, and I feel like I have to. Jesus. To destroy that. That's right. Burden. Yes. Jesus. That, that yoke. Jesus. Because pornography is only the gateway. Come on. Into other. Acts of lewdness. That's right. So I look at it as innocent. You don't even recognize the deception of the enemy. That's right. Now I got your number. It's straight porn. No, it's not. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Because you ain't looking at only women. That's right. Come on. Come on! 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 Jesus. And then you wonder why you start feeling same sex attraction. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. Having certain urges. It's because he allowed you to think that it was straight porn. Right, right. But not allowing you to really see what you were looking for. Right. Deception. Oh, you start having urges that you never experienced before. Because it's a gateway. Yes, it is. And after a while, that no longer satisfies you. So now you got to indulge in the things that you've been seeing. Yes, yes sir. It's Jesus. a stronghold. Yes, it is. I hear the Holy Ghost. It's a strong. Yes, it is. And if we be honest, it ain't money causing the problems in your marriage. Come on now. It ain't all of these other little 
frivolous things that's causing problems in the marriage. There is a deep down inside of you an appetite that is trying to surface that you're trying to suppress uh -huh. but it's fighting to come out. Warfare. And you taking it out on your spouse. Yeah, come on now. Not knowing that every root got to spring up. That's right, that's right. So the devil told you, well, it's just a little poem. It's harmless. But it is opening the door to an appetite. That if not caught now, it's getting ready to give birth to something that you won't even be able to contain. That's right, that's right. Consumed with it. If you don't get that thing under control, it's going to run wild. Yes, yes. So this ain't to shame you. This ain't to embarrass you, I promise you. This is to deliver you tonight. And I just want to see if you got any bold individual with a knife that will run to this altar and say, Lord, I need deliverance. Don't worry about who the connection is. Jesus. Don't worry about who the connection is. I promise you. I promise you. Jesus. It's spoken. Jesus. Yes. It's spoken. Jesus. It's spoken. 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 It's spoken.
break it though. Don't break it, okay? name of Jesus. I can't make this up if I try. Can't make it up. Can't make it up. I know I know that can't make it up. I, th I think the purpose been I think the purpose is kind of manifest. I, I didn't think it was going to happen that quickly. I don't know. I don't know nothing about you. I don't know nothing about her. I don't know nothing about him. Jesus. Jesus. I don't know none of y'all business. But I know what I heard the Lord say. And I was trying to say it quietly. You know, I don't know who watches. I don't know. I'm trying to get in my head drunk. But I heard, I heard what the, I mean, my, my brother these always say my back is broad enough to hold it. So I ain't never scared. I don't care. I heard the Holy Ghost come in and say, don't let nothing keep you from coming here. And I heard him. And I heard him say, there's a purpose to your connectivity to this house. I heard him. Not knowing that these two people are related to you, they go here.
my prayer. These are tears. Jesus.
your prophet, Lord. Touch your prophet. Young lady in the leather jacket, gray hoodie with the braids. Come in. I've been using Pastor Gordon all night. Prophet is going to need to help. Yeah. 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 
I'll, I'll say it. like a silhouette, a white glowing silhouette. Jesus. Leadership. Jesus. 
us. You're coming, you're coming in. The Lord said, I'm sending you in to bring revival, revitalization. You will be like a spiritual defibrillator. You're going to resuscitate houses. For the Lord said that I will use you to bring honor back unto my people. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They're going to wonder who set these things up for you. And because you don't do it for the money, the Lord says that he is going to compensate you. Yes, Lord. On levels you would not have ever imagined. Yes, Lord. As it was the apostles, they brought the money to the apostles' feet. These people are the seal of your apostleship. Yes, your overseer, but God calls you his apostle. Yes, Lord. You hear what I'm saying to you? He calls you his apostle. The Lord says, don't let older men because I can see where these doors are opening up to you. In these various cities, and before things get too crazy, you're traveling outside of the country. And your thumbprint is going to be in these continents and in these nations. It's going to be a quick work in a short amount of time. But the Lord says to tell you tonight that I have already worked the differences out. I've already worked the specifics out. Tonight, yes, you have assignments uh, booked up. But the Lord says these assignments are the end of testing and proving you. Jesus. Because you said, look, just do this and, and, and I'm coming. Because you did not take advantage of my people, the Lord says, now I am causing your gift to make room for you and bring you before great men. Jesus. You will go and you will speak as my oracle, says the Spirit of God. And you mentioned Jesus in the temple. He was not just there by himself, but there were scholars and doctors of the law, astonished by the revelation he was speaking from. Man of God, get ready, because God said, I can trust you with this level of information. Yes, Lord. To watch this bring reformation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My body collectively. You will not operate in one dimension of these gifts, but all five of the gifts are open. Jesus. In you, working interchangeably. They're working within you. You're going to activate. You're going to identify. You're going to deliver. You're going to disciple. You're going to deploy. There will be senior men. Glory to God. And I know it will look weird and strange. A young man, glory to God, laid hands. But the Lord says, this laying of the hands is bringing honor back to the hands. Yes, yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Everything that is and have been negotiated, this is what he said. He said, tell my son, as it was in the days of Ezra, and in the days of Nehemiah, so shall those days be with you. They tried to stop the building, the advancing. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause the work to be built fast. And the Jesus. fast building of the work doesn't come from a carnal place, but it will be strategically positioned in place. 52 days in Nehemiah is when they built that wall. And it was built in that time and it caused everyone around them, Sanbat and Tobias and the Arabians, to miss exactly what was going on. 
Man of God, the Lord says, I'm going to do this in a stealth mode for you. Yeah. Because there are people that are, even within the city of uh, Brooklyn, New York, glory to God, where you've, you've, they've seen the information that you posted. That's why you have to be careful what you share because these Jesus. are Jesus. monitoring spirits. Jesus! Monitoring spirits. It's so much that the Lord is bringing before me tonight. But I'm telling you, because of this covenant relationship, I'm, I'm, I will be a brother to you. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. Thank I don't you, Lord. have no tricks under my sleeves, no hidden agendas. I will be that to you. I will be a real brother to you. Pray for you. Pray with you, you and your family, and see when it's necessary. So tonight, the Lord says, prepare yourself, son. Because I'm sending you as a whirlwind, and the houses that are in disarray will be brought back into alignment before my return, says the Spirit of Grace. Because I'm talking about major platforms. You hear what I'm saying to you? From major voices, major voices. You hear what I'm saying to you? He said, Get, get ready. Money will never be an issue for you. Yes. I'm Jesus. talking about to, even to your people. Those of you, tell me the name of the ministry again. Outreach. Those of you that are part of Outreach, I need you to stand up right now because there is a, a, an anointing that is going to stimulate and release the financial favor, glory to God, that this movement is going to need in order to solidify certain things because you will not be involved with the banks like everybody else has. Jesus, been. Jesus, Jesus. Says, Jesus. I'm going to release the wealth in the hands of your people, and your people will help fund the vision. And I even see sheep that are not of your fold. Jesus. Are coming to partner. Glory to God. Your, your face, I'm telling you, social media, glory to God, you're about to be all over the place because of the manifestations of his glory that are going to be seen. They're going to come up and be like, oh my God, do you see this? You see that clock? What I've seen these last two days, they're going to be getting to testify. And there's going to be demonstration. I'm talking about literally, they're going to testify and say it was like lightning, electricity went throughout my body. Glory to God. You're going to see limbs grow back. Glory to God. You're going to begin to see cancer dry up. Yeah. You're going to see mighty moves of God from this day forward, says the Spirit of Grace for your ministry. Prepare yourself because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men that which God has prepared for them because He knows you love Him. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Listen. I'm so full, I don't know what to do. But let's give God another hand praise for this prophet, this apostle. Listen. We didn't do this last night. I want us to get a seat to show it to this man of God. Where's my phone? God, baby, I need my phone. I'm going to start this seed off with $30 tonight. Glory to God. I'm starting this off with $30 tonight. Who has my phone? Amen. Amen. Bring me my phone. Those that are going to join me with that $30 seed, I need you to get it right now. Hallelujah. And I tell you, he blessed my soul. Thank you, God. Amen. 